I saw some polling results that made me want to talk about something. From Polling USA, Americans support getting into a war with Iran if Iran attacks Israel. Should the United States directly intervene in the conflict if Iran attacks Israel? 59% say yes. If it's broken down by age group. And um, you can see older people are more in favor of it. Now, one thing that you might notice from this poll is that it's not sourced, and I have no idea what the sample size is, and it could be completely made up. I have no idea if it's real. But I do want to talk about Iran. I want to talk about um, intervention in uh, Iran because I think that it's going to become a very big talking point in the near future. And uh, I, I just want to sort of share my thoughts on it in like one easy place, okay? So Iran is a country full of a wide variety of ethnic and political groups controlled by a dictatorial Islamist regime. The reason they're controlled by it is basically our fault. Iran uh, used to be ruled by a Shah who was supported and backed by the West, and he was so decadent and hated by his people that uh, the Iranian people had a revolution, and there were a bunch of different revolutionary groups looking to replace the Shah, and the Islamists won and killed the other ones or arrested them, and that's why they rule today. The people of Iran are a lot more mixed politically than I think a lot of people understand them to be. One of the things that distinguishes, uh, hold on, one of the things that distinguishes Iran from its neighboring countries that a lot of Americans don't seem to understand, they don't, uh, they don't sort of respect this fact, is that Iran is a real f***ing country, okay? Now, not to come across as racist or anything, but uh, Afghanistan is like maybe half a country. Let's be real here, okay? Afghanistan has been bombed into oblivion so many times, warring constantly. It's just truly, it's a wacky place, you know? To a large extent, Iraq is like this as well. A large portion of Syria is literally like a failed state at the moment. Like this whole portion of Syria right here doesn't even exist. Iran is not like that. Iran is much more developed. It has a larger economy, a more educated population with better developed cities, if I, like, I'm just gonna, I, I, I think this sounds really obvious, but I often hear people rope together Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, and Afghanistan, like, in the same breath. But there are so many differences. Like, it, like, a lot of people just don't respect that when they talk about this, you know? Let me just Google really quickly, like, Kabul. Sure. Show me Kabul. Now, it's a little unfair to use Kabul. I mean, it's, it's not. A lot of wacky things have happened in Kabul, okay? It's a wacky place. We love our wacky places, don't we, folks? Okay? Kabul, capital of Afghanistan. Notice how even in Afghanistan, they know how to use color better than a lot of Western cities. Hmm. Tehran. Wow, the mountains are big in Iran. I'm going to get to the point on the mountains shortly, but just like the mountain ranges in Iran are insane. I, it, it, what? It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Okay, so Iran is much more developed. The problem here is that Iran's uh, leadership is um, not great. Iran, uh, Iran's leadership legitimizes its rule by posing itself as an anti-imperialist regime that fights against Western influence. Remember, the Ayatollah came to power in direct response to an overthrowing of the Shah, of the Western-backed uh, puppet leader, right? So in a way, the Islamist regime of Iran is a direct response to American, um, you know, Western, at the very least, imperial power. Now, obviously, day to day, the Iranian leadership is not like fighting America. They're not exactly battling in the streets to remove American occupiers. Uh, the past actions of Western governments are very convenient to them now because they can paint a narrative where they're like, hey, you know how the West is evil, right? Right, the West is evil, right? Look at all these things they did to us. And we did do those things to them. Now that we've established the West is evil, let me explain to you how the Ayatollah is the only one who can protect us from Western decadence and cultural influence. Does that make sense? So our past crimes are convenient to their leadership as a way of justifying their power. Putin does the exact same thing, by the way. Exact same thing. So it's it's pretty common around the world. North Korea, they do the same thing. 
uh, it, countries that don't like the West do this. They like doing this, okay? So Iran doesn't like the West. The people of Iran, based on the polling that I've seen, actually not super anti-Western. Again, a lot of them are relatively worldly educated and, um, you know, uh, economically developed. A good comparison to this would be China. The government of China is pretty anti-American. And likewise with America's government to China. But the average like Chinese citizen, if you just go over to like Beijing or something and like ask around, you're not going to see this like seething cultural hatred of America present in the people broadly, you know? And that's largely because as a consequence of being relatively wealthy and educated, it's just kind of hard to keep people in that state. You know what I mean? I'm generalizing a lot, but it is important to understand that the average like Iranian citizen is not some kind of like diehard jihadist. They really, really aren't. A lot of Iranians do not like their leadership. Okay, so with all that being said, Iran wants nukes. And you know, who could blame them? Iran wants nukes. Uh, you know, as a country that has been victimized by foreign powers quite a few, uh, quite, you know, a few times, um, I mean, the, the, the war with Iraq, the constant threats of invasion from America, the fact that Israel is right over here and Israel and Iran hate each other. Iran wants nukes. Every country wants nukes, right? Only a few get to actually have them. Uh, we had under Obama the fantastic Iranian nuclear accords, which were meant to prevent Iran from pursuing a nuclear program. And in exchange, we would like lighten up sanctions and like unfreeze money. Yeah, the JCPOA. Yeah, I, I always forget the exact uh, the term for it. I always just think of it as the nuclear accords. Obama had this deal signed. Trump got rid of it. It was like the best foreign policy thing that Obama did and Trump destroyed it. Thank you. Yeah, people were saying we were paying Iran to not build nukes, but that's wrong. We froze their money. We were giving them their money back and keeping them from building nukes. We ha the, the, the rules of the agreement allowed us to inspect their facilities. One thing that you have to understand about building nukes is some parts of it are a lot easier than others. Uh, first, obtain fissile material, uranium, plutonium, whatever. How easy is this? Pretty easy. The world actually has a lot of uranium in it. It's not that hard. Uh, step number two, Build a missile program. Well, if you're a developed nation, you already have one. I don't know if Iran has ICBM capabilities. Iran has the largest and most diverse ballistic missile arsenal in the Middle East, but do they have ICBMs? Iran says it has successfully test launched ballistic missile. Okay. If Iran is bragging about a potential 2000 kilometer range, that means they don't have ICBMs. However, they do have BMs, <laughs> ballistic missiles. 2,000 kilometers would allow them to... Where's the ruler on this? Is there not a ruler on default Google Maps? Whatever, 2,000 kilometers gives them quite a lot of range. Certainly enough to hit Israel, which is the main country that's worried. So we have fissile material, and we have um, a missile program. What's the third thing we need to do? Right, enrich the uranium. Uh, Uranium on its own can't sustain a nuclear reaction. You need a particular isotope. And only about 1% of uranium is the right... No, wait, not even 1%. Isn't it like 0.1%? 0.1%, right? 0.71%. So closer to 1% than 0.1%. Only a small portion of uranium is the right isotope, the kind that can actually sustain a nuclear reaction. So you need that. And the process of refining it is really, 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 really difficult. Uh, even with modern methods, enriching uranium is incredibly time-consuming and expensive. Energy, resources, space, like, it's not easy. So it's really hard to do it on the down low. Getting the uranium, easy. Enriching it, difficult. So basically, the goal with the... Um, the goal with our program was to make sure they weren't building nukes by having inspectors. It would be pretty easy to see where the nuclear um, development was taking place. So we thought this was a good arrangement. And then again, Donald Trump destroyed this arrangement. So Iran now has no reason to believe the West can ever be trusted with any kind of international agreement. Guys, we had an anti-nuclear accord with the Ayatollah, the Ayatollah, and we broke it. We broke it. So why would they ever trust us for diplomacy?
Like, ever. Like, why, why would they ever, 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 ever trust us for any kind of accord? Frankly, they shouldn't. So, the nuclear weapons program is on. And uh, we can't send inspectors to Iran because we don't have the right to. That we, we broke the deal. So, now the question is, when will they get nukes? It's pretty much inevitable that they do. But it's really just a matter of time. They're well developed enough that they could get them. It's just a matter of like how long it takes for them to build everything, build the lab, refine, enrich. It's not an easy process, and it's also probably not their top political priority. But uh, just a moment. That doesn't mean that the West isn't worried. This is from 2021. I'm not even going to bother breaking the um, ad block here. Blackout hits Iran nuclear site in what appears to be Israeli sabotage. The power failure was described by Iran as, quote, nuclear terrorism as talks were underway in Vienna to restore the 2015 nuclear deal. Talks that fell through, by the way. Israel has basically said they will never let Iran get nukes because Israel is the country that would be most likely to be in the receiving end. You know? So, it's pretty likely that Israel has engaged in not just one, but multiple acts of sabotage to destroy Iran's nuclear weapons program, to prevent them from being able to properly refine the material. In response to this, if I was a good streamer, I would already have these links ready. In response to both consistent and the threat of sabotage, Iran has built a nuclear facility deep into their mountains. Now, we saw a bit of their mountains earlier. Iran has lots of mountains. The nuclear facility that they have built is so deep that we can't bomb it. It's not really possible. Um, we would need some like proper, dedicated, like serious military action to destroy it. It could only be reached with ground operations, as you say, muskets and bayonet. And what's more, I'm going to guess that they've probably upped their security a little bit so they don't get caught unawares by Israel. Just cave in the entrance, Vosh? No, I don't think so. I don't think we're stopping this one, boys. I think it's only a matter of time until Iran has nuclear weapons. If Israel and the United States ever arrive at the conclusion that Iran is on a rapid path to nuclear development, there is a very high likelihood that we invade. The most likely pretext for this would be Israel claiming that they're acting in self-defense. They would say that Iran would certainly nuke them if they had the nukes, so Israel has to preemptively attack. Now, if Israel invaded Iran, they would lose. Very badly. The reason for this is because map of world mountains. The reason for this is because Iran is one gigantic mountain range, which if you've played Advance Wars is the uh, area with the highest territorial defense. There we go. I've shown this on stream before, but so there's the Rockies. There's Iran right here. Whole country. This is why we struggled so much in Afghanistan, by the way. This is why we never wiped out the Taliban, and it's why um, Russia, uh, uh, or the USSR, lost in Afghanistan. It's because Afghanistan is a giant mountain range. So is Iran. Israel, on its own, would not be able to conduct a military operation capable of breaking Iran. Again, Iran is a big country with a lot of people. How many people? Isn't it like 90 million? 90 million. 90 million people population of Israel. Nine million. Yeah. Ten times the population of Israel. So if Israel wanted to engage in military action against Iran under the pretext of preemptively defending themselves against nuclear proliferation, which country would they call on to help them? Obviously. And America doesn't really want Iran to have nukes either. I'm not saying that this is guaranteed to happen. I'm kind of running through a possibility list here. It's basically guaranteed. I don't think it's necessarily guaranteed, but I think there's a decent likelihood. First of all, we have to talk about 
the logistics of invading Iran. First of all, how? Well, they share a small border with Turkey, that's true, but Turkey's relationship to the situation is complicated. Likewise with Armenia and Azerbaijan. Iraq is a U.S. ally, but Iraq has also been very heavily susceptible by Iranian influence since our large departure. Uh, Iraq isn't like an enemy of the U.S., but Iran is by far the more powerful neighbor, and they have been, in, in a cruel twist of fate after the brutal invasion by Saddam Hussein, now Iran gets to exert its power over Iraq, which means that moving through Iraq would be, at the very least, um, complicated. And then on the other side of things, you have Afghanistan, which is, you know, controlled by the Taliban. We're not doing shit with Turkmenistan. And then you've got Pakistan. And keep in mind that every direction we come at this from, this entire chunk of land is a mountain range. Now, Israel can't do shit in their own. Not against Iran. We would have to involve ourselves. Now, could we invade Iran successfully? Ah! One thing that we could do successfully is destroy any country on Earth by nuking them. That's the easy part, right? But assuming nukes are off the table, assuming we actually have to, you know, commit to a ground invasion, which we would, because if they do have nuclear facilities, they probably have lots of them spread out across multiple labs with equipment that would be hidden in multiple bases, multiple places. We would need to be down there. Um, could we meaningfully occupy them? Well, we couldn't really do that in the other countries around, you know? So in Iraq, we effortlessly, well, I don't want to say effortlessly, we f***ed up Iraq pretty quickly, twice, but then ISIS happened. Clearly, we didn't control the area that well. In Afghanistan, sure, we f***ed Afghanistan up, but then we basically just held a few major cities while the Taliban continued to run rampant across the edges. And Iran is much, 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 much more developed, more fortified than either of those countries. So I don't really think we could do much here. The reason why I'm saying all of this is because I feel like, I feel like what I'm saying is also going to be obvious to people in command in the United States. And I mean, it's not like they haven't done stupid shit before. But if there is a risk of Iran immediately developing nuclear weapons, or possibly even having nuclear weapons, the consequence of messing with Iran and losing could be Armageddon. Like, Iraq and Afghanistan didn't have weapons of mass destruction. And Bush knew that, you know? Colin Powell knew that. They lied. If Iraq actually had nukes, we wouldn't have invaded them. Because that's the point of having nukes. That's why Iran wants nukes. So in the, in the coming future, there's going to be like real geopolitical conflict over the consequences of Iran developing nuclear weapons. And I don't actually know what the solution to it is. Like, let's play this out, right? Solution number one is a joint, like a coalition attack in Iran from Israel, America, and maybe others. If we do that, what happens? Well, Maybe we succeed in destroying their nuclear facilities, but the effort involved in occupation and the costs involved would be ruinous globally. It would also... I couldn't even begin to imagine the cost, both human and monetary. It would be very bad. Um, if Israel goes in on their own, that would be very bad for Israel. Um, very, 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 very bad. I don't think that's going to happen. That seems very unlikely. Um, the most likely outcome that I can think of would be that Israel just continues to mount a series of escalating sabotage attacks on Iran while stalling for time to wait for a revolution or the Ayatollah to die or anything else um, and hoping that they can sort of stall things out long enough that the nukes aren't developed. Another possibility is that Iran gets the nukes. What happens if Iran gets the nukes? See, on one hand, Iran's government may be Islamofascist in nature, but I don't actually think they would, like, nuke Israel right off the bat. The reason for that is because Iran doesn't engage in the same kind of 
destructive politics of antagonism that their rhetoric might lead you to believe. A lot like North Korea, in the sense that they get a lot of clout by pretending to be like super antagonistic to their neighbors, but in reality, it's deliberate, calculated antagonism designed to keep people away from them, but not actually engage in warfare. If Iran wanted to do like genuine world ending conflict shit, they could have done that earlier. Like they've had plenty of opportunities, right? So if they actually got nuclear weapons, would they use them? I don't think so. On the other hand, again, it's an Islamo-fascist dictatorship, right? Maybe the Ayatollah just loses it one day? I don't think that's likely. The Ayatollah is a dictator, but as I understand it, Iran isn't, like, singly controlled by him in the way it might seem. Like, it has to go through a chain of people. Does that make sense? Like, very often when it seems as though a country is ruled by one dictator, it's not. There's a group of, like, generals or civil leaders they have to go through because, yeah, like, they're keys, if you've seen that um, CGP Grey video. You know, uh, so I don't really think that's on the table. In reality, I, I think that... I think we can actually get a little bit of hopium from, their, uh, from a, a neighbor of Iran because next to Iran there is actually a nuclear-capable country that has had more of an opportunity to be f insane about it. We don't talk about these two countries in relation to each other that often, but Pakistan and India, as I said just a little bit ago, are more racist to each other than you could possibly fathom. They both have nukes, and they have both had, like, skirmishes and shootouts on their respective border. And yet, they have not invaded or nuked each other. So if countries like this are capable of behaving this way, without nuclear Armageddon, could Iran do the same? Is it possible that Iran would engage in something resembling moderation with nuclear weapons? I would like to believe they would. Navosh, you're talking about Iran like it's USSR while it's Nazi Germany. It's not Nazi Germany. Uh, again, Iran maybe Islamo-fascist, but they're not controlled by, like, ISIS or whatever, or even the Taliban. He, this is a good example, okay? There's a very big difference between how groups behave when they're insurgents and how they behave when they're leaders. Did you, you remember that article, how, like, the Taliban is like, man, I just want to go wage jihad in the, in the mountainside. I don't want to do data entry you will do the data entry like that mate you know what i'm talking about like the taliban went from being like the scourge of the afghanistan mountain ranges and now they're all sitting in kabul with a desk job getting like back pain you know um the the shift from like insurrectionist or or, or revolutionary behavior into nation management is a jarring one and iran has run itself as a very functional and competent nation for decades now can anyone deny that? Again, this isn't Syria. This isn't like Iraq or Afghanistan. Iran has been, as a Middle Eastern country goes, pretty successful. Like they're managing themselves pretty well. It's not like they're doing this like crazy ideological warfare shit that has been like, you know, you know what I mean? Like they're pretty stable. Like again, it's the Middle East. We're grading on a curve here, you know? Um, gives me the impression that if they had nuclear weapons, they would behave relatively, you know, relatively uh, responsible with them. Which makes me think that the greatest threat might actually be from the West. Could you imagine the headlines if it was found that Iran had nuclear weapons? I'm actually more worried about America and Israel uh, escalating tensions than I am with Iran. Because... Iran understands that if they ever act up, especially with nukes, they'll be glassed. But the Israeli and American public don't. People over here are safe. America is safe. Israel isn't, but these are democracies, you know? The fervor of the population might transfer into fervor of the leaders, or vice versa. and. If the headlines are Iran has nukes, Israel under threat, I can see a series of really bad decisions 
escalating into Western intervention in Iran in like an insanely misguided attempt to protect Israel from, you know, nuclear action. And the worst case scenario of that would be Iran nuking Israel, uh, which would probably lead to us nuking Iran. This is all very, 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 very edge case stuff. Um, but I guess I'm mostly just sharing my thoughts and my general worries. I just don't know if the West is capable emotionally of handling Iran having nuclear weapons. You know? I don't know if they have a game plan for that. I don't, I don't know if there's a world where the West can just accept that. Hopefully we can. You know? They handled China. They might have to learn. Yeah, but China's had nukes for decades. This would be a new thing. Do you not think there'd be a strong anti-war sentiment in the U.S.? I would hope so. What about Israel? Israel going in on their own wouldn't be that much better, especially if it led to a nuclear attack. I... Is there still the possibility of democratic revolution in Iran? Yeah. Vosh, we accepted North Korea having nukes with South Korea right there. Uh, we didn't really accept it. Like, North Korea got nukes. Even this is kind of ambivalent. We're like, we don't really know the details of their program. And the world's largest demilitarized zone is right underneath them. And also, like, okay, let me put it this way. If South Korea had gotten a memo like 50, 40, whatever years ago saying beep, 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 in one month, North Korea will have nuclear weapons. This is your last chance. Beep, 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 beep. South Korea would have marched every single citizen, every single person in, within their borders northward. They would have marched. It would have been like the rumbling, okay? If they had known they had a window, yeah. They, they they would have simply stomped on North Korea. Yeah, Japan too. And likewise, what if the West like what what if the West realizes like holy shit, Iran has nuclear enrichment facilities. Our spies tell us that they're operating and we can't stop them because they're in mountain bases that are like heavily guarded. We can't send in a team to do anything. The team would just get killed. Like, it's well-guarded. They're gonna have nukes in a year. How do you think Israel and America would handle that information? Like, they don't have nukes now, but they might soon. Not might, they will soon. That's rough. Hopefully it doesn't happen. Again, not an expert on geopolitics. Uh, these are just thoughts and concerns that I have. I think it's a future problem we're going to have to deal with. Not that far in the future, though. Um, enrichment takes a while, but, like, not that long once they get the facilities up and operational. But you're underplaying the spy capabilities of Israel and Iran. I'm not underplaying it, but, like, it's, you know, spies aren't magic. You know, you can get away with sabotage to some extent. Okay, let me put it this way. I'm just going to end with this, okay? Iran building its nuclear facilities so deep underground that airstrikes couldn't reach it implies that was something they were worried about. If they were only concerned about sabotage, that would be one thing. But the fact that they're taking preventative measures to shield themselves against airstrikes kind of implies they're doing things they think they might otherwise get airstriked over. And airstriking Iran would be a really, really big deal. So it seems to me that they're aware of the fact that they're doing something that would otherwise incur significant interventionary action from the West. I thought they already had enrichment capabilities. Uh, well, they're building enrichment facilities capable of enriching uranium to a weaponized degree. You don't have to enrich it as much for, like, um, nuclear power plants. Okay. I have one more segment. Oh, wait. Somebody linked this while we were talking early on about um, Ethan and Leftovers, and I wanted to watch it. What are the odds Iran gets nuked by Israel? I don't think they're very high. Like, preemptively, I don't think they're very high. For one, like, the mountain ranges that Iran can build in are, like, 
Iran could survive nukes pretty well. I know that sounds dumb, but if any country had the topography that would give them an advantage in building military infrastructure that would survive, like, nuclear weapons, Iran would be, like, the number one country that I could think of. Nukes don't go that far into the ground. And keep in mind, the majority of nuclear weapons that um, Israel has are almost certainly tactical nuclear weapons, not strategic ones. An airburst, usually? Yeah, true, true. Most of them are even designed to burst in the air, not to go in the ground. What's the difference between the two? Tactical nuclear weapons are designed to attack specific targets. Strategic nuclear weapons are designed to end the world. Essentially. Like, a, a tactical nuclear weapon is like, there is a big military fortification over there and I want to delete it. A strategic nuclear weapon is, I want to reduce one-third of the French countryside to rubble. In fact, we can do this right over here. Let's go with Washington, D.C. I'd rather not do it. Well, hold on. Actually, let's go with Paris. I kind of like the idea of making them the, the victims here. There we go. This is nuke map. You can guess what it does. So, um, hold on. Tactical nuke yield. From under one kiloton to about 100 kilotons. Let's take this at about 10 kilotons. There we go. Yellow is the fireball. Red is blast damage, or heavy blast damage. This is moderate blast damage. This is the radiation radius, thermal radiation radius. Uh, radius light blast damage. There we go. So a tactical nuclear weapon of about 10 kilotons would do this. Now that's a lot, but you know, there's France, right? Or you can select a preset. Oh, nice. They have presets right here. Here we go. Here's a crude nuclear terrorist weapon. So this would be like a shitty one, I guess. Look at that. Anyone play, um, cyberpunk? Remember how, uh, Johnny Silverhands dropped a nuke at the base of the Arasaka Tower. North Korean weapon tested in 2013. 10 kilotons. That's the one we just looked at. Little boy Hiroshima bomb. So this is Hiroshima. Oh no, you spoiled a horrible game. That's not, that's not spoilers. At all. You should turn on radioactive fallout. Sure. There we go. There's the radioactive fallout zone. So anyway, uh, these are just examples of tactical uh, bombs. Much smaller. Now, strategic bombs, let's just go all the way to Tsar Bomba, the uh, largest USSR bomb ever designed. All right, let's get the big boom. You might notice a slightly larger circle here, visible from space, certainly. That would be the uh, fireball. Yeah. So, essentially, tactical nuclear weapons are the kind that you would use for some specific military purpose. Strategic nuclear weapons are the whole mutually assured destruction, if you can end the world, I can end the world kind of thing. You know? Switch it to surface for fallout. Ah, there we go. Ah, yes, the fallout. And the fallout, of course. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Largest Indian weapon tested. Yes, uh, India and Pakistan do not have nukes that are as uh, impressive as ours. Can you click on largest US one, uh, US weapon? 15 megatons. Again, quite large. What about, uh, what, what, what bombs does Israel have? I'm actually curious. It is worth noting, by the way, that if Iran actually did develop a successful nuclear weapons program, it is overwhelmingly likely that, um, theirs would not be very large. Like, they, they would not be like, oh, here's our first nuke, Tsar Bomba, you know, in, in all, in all likelihood, it would probably be, you know, um, something like this. No one knows what Israel has. Israel doesn't even admit it has a nuclear program. That's cool. All right, we're kind of we're kind of being we're, we're being a bit morose right now. Let's uh, let's move on. 